Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our weekly community leadership forum. I'm going to put everybody in mute all for right now so that we uh, reduce the background noise. So uh, quite a bit to get into this afternoon, uh, Friday, May 15th, based on uh, um, the Commonwealth ramping up to uh, Governor Baker's uh, reopening advisory board report, which is slated to come out um, sometime Monday, the 18th. Uh, we are joined this week by our public health director. Great to see you on the call. Um, and, and I know there's a smile because you have folks that are able to help you so you can take a break and join us on the call. So thanks, Megan. Good to see you. And I'll turn it over to Megan in just a moment. But I wanted to get into some um, uh, or the uh, public administration aspect, if you will, of uh, COVID-19. And uh, I was bragging to Chairman Ballantyne earlier about my skills on sharing documents. So I'm gonna put that to the test right now. So hopefully everybody can see the, uh, the graphic that's up. This is a part of a three page document that Governor Baker spoke to uh, Monday, May 11th and has been referring back to constantly and continually. So uh, it's important enough that I just wanted to make sure you folks have had a chance to see it because I know we in government will be relying upon uh, this document and this guidance for, uh, for quite some time. Uh, it, it talks about the governor's four phase approach to reopening in Massachusetts, as you can see there on the first slide. And so we are in the current stay at home uh, this is a narrative that was identified predominantly for the, what has been considered non-essential. So um, that would not include government operations at this point. We're already operating uh, in accordance with the other documents that you'll see in a moment. But uh, the phases are listed there. Phase one is, a, is identified or labeled as start. And that is limited industries resuming operations with severe restrictions. Uh, we've seen some of that over the last two weeks, most notably uh, and interestingly enough, golf operations, both municipally and privately. Phase two is labeled cautious, which is additional industries resuming operations with restrictions and capacity limits. Phase three is vigilant, additional industries resume operations with guidance. And uh, phase four is quite simply what is referred to as new normal. Uh, and uh, the statement there is the development of vaccine and or therapy enables resumption of new normal. When Governor Baker addressed this on Monday the 11th, he you know, indicated that it could be um, several weeks, say uh, perhaps four weeks, generally speaking, uh, between phases. Uh, it could be two or three weeks, but it's all going to be predicated by the bottom portion of that where you can see that on the right-hand side, they talk about if public health metrics fall below thresholds, uh, you could revert back to a prior phase. Um, and so you've got a continuum where the top half shows progress going forward. The continuum uh, below that shows what could happen on a, on a reversion or a downside. Um, I use the inelegant uh, analogy of chutes and ladders, uh, not to make light of the situation, but if we remember that childhood game, you uh, have the potential of making two steps forward and then something occurs and we, we get right back to the beginning. So that is still very much uh, prevalent in the mind of the governor from what I've heard. And it's something I think we'd all be wise to keep in our minds. You can see on the second slide there what they're now talking about with those phases is overall social guidance, safety standards, and specific protocols for any industries that are allowed to reopen uh, under phase one, which again is referred to as start. So uh, because municipal governments are considered essential, we've already been um, operating under these uh, guidances and protocols. So we're fairly well versed in that. Um, I know it's also not something that uh, is unique to anybody but I wanna just highlight the third slide there, which talks about the mandatory safety standards for workplaces. And you can see the note there that these are safety standards are applicable to all sectors and industries. Lieutenant Governor Polito on her call with managers and administrators on Tuesday emphasized that because government is essential, it's expected that we are already operating under those standards. And I am 
uh, pleased to tell you that we are, and that uh, ties back to the leadership of our public health director. Before I turn it over to Megan, I want to just give you uh, two other points that I, I picked up on yesterday with a Cape and Islands managers and administrators call. Uh, some of you may have read, I believe it was the Cape Cod Times that had an article or uh, an expose, perhaps as a way to refer to it, on a draft document that was released publicly um, when it was intended not to be. Uh, this was a document that was circulated amongst a subgroup of Governor Baker's advisory group, and they were dealing with coastal and inland waterways. Very extensive, uh, very comprehensive, and, and very jarring, I would say, personally in their recommendations. However, uh, not unexpected in, in the way that they're looking at it. However, that document is draft. That document has not been released and is not in effect, although we do expect it to be uh, released as early as uh, early next week. Also on our manager's call yesterday, we heard from a um, CAPE manager who's part of that subgroup uh, working with um, Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretariat, uh, specifically uh, Secretary Theoretis. Um, she is responsible for just about anything to do with outdoor recreational areas. And she advised her subgroup yesterday that uh, she expects to release a matrix as early as Monday of next week. Uh, I think the distinction of a matrix is information but uh, not expected to go into effect. Uh, I was relieved to hear that what they were talking about was outdoor recreational activities, but there would be no requirements for municipalities and others to respond immediately, that these would not be in effect before Memorial Day, which incredibly enough is next week or starting next Friday for the long weekend. But that matrix is going to talk about just about any conceivable outdoor recreational activity that you can, can uh, that you can think of. Uh, indicated that it would uh, potentially touch again on golf, beaches, marinas, sports camps, day camps, recreation camps, and uh, and some of those with an understanding that uh, whatever the matrix is referring to may not be in effect until phase two, which I, if I remember correctly is the is the cautious phase. So quite a bit going on this week in anticipation of the re, uh, reopening advisory board's report to be released by Governor Baker on Monday. I uh, caution everybody that Megan and I can tell you directly that um, we've, um, we've endeavored to do many things. We get into it with the, the best of intentions, the best resources, and it's negated by an announcement by the governor. Not a criticism, just a statement of reality. Um, I say that because the governor is, uh, is expected to have his uh, press conference today at two o'clock. So some of what I may have just told you could have been, could be rendered moot by this time, by that time this afternoon. Uh, the board of selectmen are meeting again on Monday the 18th and uh, the agenda is predominantly driven by discussion points in reaction to the reopening report uh, that we'll get sometime on Monday. So much more to come from an administrative or um, management standpoint. At this point, I will turn it over to our public health director for her more detailed and uh, updated information on numbers and everything else. Megan, nice to see you. The floor is yours. Thanks, Joe. It's nice to see everybody too. I'm glad I could get some help today at home. Um, COVID definitely has affected all aspects of my life. So um, I'm happy to be here today and be able to let you guys know what's happening in the state as well as the town as far as cases and numbers go, trends. Um, cases in the Commonwealth are up to 82,182. Um, and we're, we're averaging about 1,100 cases a day. That's Those are new cases. And as you see numbers, uh, Mondays are usually uh, a low number because we report out 24 hours later. So those numbers on Monday reflect Sunday's numbers and, and we see a, a, a whole lot less testing over the weekend um, or test processing, I should say. So when you are looking at numbers day to day, keep in mind that we're looking at trends and not individual days. Uh, we had fewer than 100 cases, uh, fewer than 100 deaths on 
reported on Monday and then uh, yesterday we were up to 167. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at numbers. Uh, we, we are up at 5,482 fatalities due to COVID in Massachusetts. Barnstable County, we, we, we're continuing to creep up in numbers. We see better days. Some days are better than others. Uh, right now, as of yesterday, four o'clock, we had 1,119 positive cases in the county with 82 deaths. And Harwich is also creeping up in numbers. We are right now at 107 cases and 17 deaths. And I caution you that the bulk of those numbers and deaths are related to long-term care facilities. Um, our long-term care facility, Wingate at Harwich, has been, has been affected by COVID. And when it gets into a facility, it's very difficult to contain. Um, they have 12 or more staff members that are positive there. And many of those staff members work at other facilities. Um, it's, it's an insidious disease, as Governor Baker has said. Uh, it, it, travels, it travels well from person to person. Um, good news for trends, our hospitalization rate over the entire Commonwealth is down to 3%. That's one of the factors that the state is looking at to move from phase to phase and to make sure that our hospitals aren't overrun by COVID needs, which would then in turn take needs away from other types of trauma patients or patients that have routine scheduled medical medical issues. Uh, so in Harwich, we're, we're, we're keeping up with our um, personal protective equipment and training of staff and employees. And I, at the health department, have been getting quite a few emails from the public about masks and face coverings, and most of them are positive, but I do want to remind the public that um, the governor did make it mandatory for everyone who is uh, inside a business that's open now or will be open in the near future. Um, masks are mandatory or face coverings are mandatory. They are mandatory when you're standing in line to get into a grocery store or a pharmacy or any other essential business. Uh, they are not mandatory if you're outside and you can maintain social distance of six feet. We do get quite a few complaints of people walking on the bike path um, and passing by people that aren't wearing their mask. Um, if you can maintain six feet, the mask isn't required. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you see people outside without masks, it's okay to be outside without a mask if you're not within six feet of someone. Um, face coverings are easy to find now. Um, Everybody is selling different, different brands and styles and patterns of them. So they're, they're easy to find. I, I hope people aren't in need of a face covering. If they can't find one, they can contact us. I know there are various uh, groups that are donating masks to different places. So if you're having trouble finding masks, we can connect you with the right people for that. Also questions I'm getting Tons and tons of questions, Cindy, from restaurant owners. And I, I know it's, it's Monday can't come fast enough. We are waiting very, very patiently for some more guidance. And the Cape Cod Task Force, Reopening Task Force is waiting for the State Advisory Task Force to come up with guidance. So we're all sort of waiting. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could have better information for, for all of them, but um, I do anticipate some pretty clear guidance on um, occupancy of restaurants inside and seating plans, taking out seats where seats previously were, um, and masks and probably reservation type things where we can control the flow of, of people that want to sit in and sit down and eat in places. Um, so we'll 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 have so much more to say on that next Friday when we do this again. Um, but just try to stay patient. We're all, we're all going to be very, very busy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and next week. 
So that's that's my update. I'm happy to take questions or if there's something that you want to know more about, I am all ears. Thanks, Megan. Uh, before we open up to questions, I do want to add on to yesterday's managers meeting. Uh, a few of the managers reported that they can confirm that the Alcohol, uh, Alcohol Beverage Control Commission, ABCC, is partnering with the Mass Restaurant Association uh, to try and come together on solutions for that uh, concept of outdoor seating, which I, uh, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, am relieved to hear that uh, because that, that guidance from the ABC is going to help streamline uh, the discussions that we had internally here in Harwich through community development, Megan, myself, our town planner and building commissioner talking about that. So great to hear that at the state level because that's just going to streamline and expedite our discussions on that. Uh, were there any questions for, for Megan or I about um, Megan or me for COVID? Because uh, if not, I want to recognize two folks that... Um, um, haven't had the opportunity to be on these calls regularly, but they may have, I know one of them has some relatively good news. Uh, so unless there are questions, I would uh, then reach out to our superintendents uh, for both of our regional schools. Uh, Bob Sanborn, I see you're on the call. Um, if, uh, if there's any updates or information you have, Bob, the floor is yours. Um, so uh, we are uh, on schedule with our building project. Um, and uh, currently uh, moving out of the old building right now. Um, we're slated to, uh, the demolition of the school is slated to be in the middle of June right now. Um, we'll probably be going totally virtual in the June timeframe uh, before we transition into the new building. Um, very proud of the contractors we're working with um, and, and the way they've been working with the town officials to maintain a safe work site. Um, the, uh, everybody takes it, his temperature is taken before they go onto the work site and come into our school. The contractors allowed us to use, uh, quite often that's a uh, EMT from the town of Harwich and we thank you for that. Um, and then obviously face coverings and gloves when, because um, we've had to have our students come back to get personal belongings, our staff to get personal belongings. Also our staff is, is uh, packing up to move over. So uh, a bevy of activity in the old building, a bevy of activity in the new building. And uh, we hope to be administratively in there in July is, is what we're looking at right now. So, uh, and once again, thank you uh, to uh, Megan um, and all the town officials who've been helpful in facilitating many things regarding COVID and in our case, Cape Cod Tech. Thank you. Bob, thank you for that update and congratulations uh, to you folks on the tremendous progress being made. Um, I also want to point out, Bob, that um, through your, your guidance, the leadership and your team, and I know uh, Chairman Ballantyne is aware of this, but the town of Harwich was able to acquire surplus uh, furniture and equipment that was uh, is estimated to be greater than um, $100,000 in value uh, that helps generally, but specifically really went a long way towards helping us retrofit our buildings. So the Great. timing was perfect. And we thank you so much for that partnership because uh, it is very high quality material. And as I said, if we were in the position of procuring, uh, would have been in the six figure range and who knows how long it would have taken. So thank you for you and your team for that. Uh, another tremendous resource for us. Yeah, our facility director, Tony Mollis, has been working double time to, to facilitate those. And I'm glad to hear that uh, some stuff has found a good home. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you again to you and your team. You're welcome. And that was part of the what I hope is good news, meaning the progress for Cape Cod Tech on their building. I'll turn it over to Dr. Carpenter, who I know has... Um, has been working on the budget. I was able to participate in their meeting last night, but Scott, I was hoping you might be able to start out on a positive note and uh, give an update on um, the potential for a wonderful community event, uh, virtual though it will be. Sure. Um, we put out a uh, email to families uh, this morning uh, just uh, sharing with them news that uh, we're intending to Hold the graduation ceremony at our uh, stadium field uh, at at our um, Monmoy Regional High School in Harwich. Um, I wanted to uh, just share. I think uh, Joe, you left the 
the school committee meeting last night before I had a chance to sort of thank you and thank Megan and the town uh, in, uh, in, in uh, thinking about the possibilities for graduation. The ceremony that we will uh, be having is one that, uh, that we want to make sure that we uh, uh, use social distancing guidelines and uh, uh, if uh, people saw the graduation ceremony in the news that the Massachusetts State Police had uh, a week ago or last uh, last Wednesday at uh, Gillette Stadium where I believe it was about 240 uh, new state troopers uh, had graduated from the police academy and were sworn in by Governor Baker at a graduation ceremony. It was just them on the field spread out you know, far from each other uh, wearing masks um, while family and friends saw the ceremony, were able to see the ceremony um, live broadcast from home. So, you know, so our our want uh, is to uh, is to have that uh, graduation ceremony or a similar graduation ceremony on our field, and coupled to that, uh, a number of community events to really celebrate uh, our senior class and and to send them off. And I cannot tell you. How many emails that have been pouring into uh, you know to my uh, email box and also Principal Burkhead's uh, ever since that email went out just uh, you know just from very grateful students and grateful parents that uh, that our community is finding a way to go uh, celebrate the achievements of these young men and women as, before they head off into their futures. So uh, great, uh, great news all around. Uh, we also uh, continue to be uh, having a successful distance learning uh, happening uh, uh, pre-K through 12, grade 12. Um, our seniors are just in the process of wrapping things up here in the next few days. Uh, our, we have AP exams are going on in the, virtually uh, this past weekend uh, and going into next week. Um, and uh, our grab and go uh, food distribution at the high school and at our middle school over in Chatham is going quite well. We have uh, served over 6,000 meals to uh, to students uh, in this past uh, in this past week, uh, which continues to be up week after week. And I, I, I was commenting that it's uh, it's more. Uh, to do with uh, you know with the need that we you know that we know is out there in our communities right now, um, as opposed to the uh, culinary excellence of what's uh, what's being served, um, and I really want to uh, you know express a great degree of gratitude to our food service staff who have been putting in the time um, to uh, you know to make these meals possible for families. Well, Scott, thanks for the update. We're, again, we're very optimistic um, cautiously so right now but very optimistic about uh, the potential going forward for those uh, those events and those activities uh, and and I also want to throw out there equal time to to Bob Sanborn I am the proud owner of two signs that say that we support our Monomoy class of 2020 so Bob I don't know if, if uh, Cape Tech is doing something similar but if you've got signs I'm willing to buy them if you're talking about the uh, signs for the seniors, yes. um, yeah, we did uh, a bunch of our staff went out in mass to 12 different towns a couple of weeks ago to uh, install signs on all our seniors uh, front lawns, um, similar to the ones that we see for Monomoy. Um, and additionally, they went out in mass again to deliver their cap and gowns. And uh, wow. so, and those, the photos taken in their cap and, cap and gowns, which would have been in their front lawn more than likely, are going to be Excellent. used for what we're hoping is our graduation on June 4th. Uh, we are waiting on pins and needles for May 18th as well. Hopeful that um, a drive-in theater in Wellfleet uh, um, graduation can happen. We're, all our plans are to have that at the Wellfleet, Wellfleet drive-in, but obviously contingent on the guidance that's coming out on the 18th. So um, that's... And I also see Chief Clark on the call, so I do want to say how invaluable Bruce Young from the fire department has been on in, on our building project. Uh, just uh, don donating a lot of his time to to uh, for, for our students and for the project. I will pass that on. Thank you very much. We're here to help. And Bob, thank you for that. And that's just a reminder as well that uh, the Lieutenant Governor confirmed.
on uh, Tuesday that one of the 44 uh, industries that uh, the administration had reached out to, uh, they consider school graduations to be an industry. So it's great to hear that from the state uh, government right on down that everybody's endeavoring. Uh, you know, so many folks have missed out on so many positive um, or emotional life events. And if, if the timing can just work out that we can support um, you know, our youth and our graduates and everybody, it would just, I think, really just buoy everybody's spirits going forward. So uh, thank you to both superintendents for that um, uh, uplifting thoughts and, and um, information. So at this point, I'll open it up uh, for the entire group. If there's other announcements or information or if there's questions for anything that um, Megan and I have covered thus far. I will share, Joe, uh, this is Pastor Dion, um, that uh, the United Church of Christ, which our church, First Congregational Church, at, as well as uh, Pilgrim Church, uh, heard yesterday that we probably will not be opening until the end of the summer. And so because in our tradition there is freedom of conscience as well as individual decision making, um, it will be up to our local churches to decide, but the strong recommendation is not until the end of the summer. So all of us will probably be upping our electronic platforms and uh, services and meetings in that regard. Um, and this is the uh, first time we've heard about the summer. Well, well, I thank you for the update. I um, share your disappointment, I'm sure, and what that means for your for your faithful community. and. Um, it just reminds us that um, we don't know what tomorrow brings or what the rest of the summer will bring, but um, here's hoping that uh, we see uh, a safe re-entry into society as much as we can. Thank you, Reverend, for your update. Uh, any other um, information or items that anyone want to share with the group? A couple of things. Oh, sorry, Lord, go ahead. Maybe Diane can mute hers. I get. I'm getting. I think it's her her phone that we're getting some. That's yep. better. That's better. Um, just a couple of things. Um, I just want to remind folks, as I did last week, to please call 911. Call for help if you need it. And I'm just going to give you a quick story and. Maybe I said it last week, but if I did, it's worth repeating. I got a really nice note uh, later this week from a from an individual in town that thanked thanked us, thanked the crew for coming with the ambulance to help them, and was so sorry that during these COVID times that uh, she had to uh, this person had to summon an ambulance. And at the at the bottom of the note, she explained that she had broken both of her ankles, one of which required surgery. Um, just folks, we're here to help you. In our world, COVID is just another part of what we do. You need to call for help in any shape or form. It, it, COVID-19 has nothing to do with the fact that we're here to help you and serve you. So please, I, I, was, I was bothered by that. And so going forward um, to our community, uh, in our visitors, if you need help, please call. We're gonna we're gonna come. It's it's okay. Um, I I'm I'm I partner with the, the town, the selectman. I see Larry's here, the chairman. I see Cindy. We I fully support businesses. I always have. I hope when I leave uh, in a in a couple of months here, or that's actually less than that, that it'll it'll be known that I did support the businesses because I do. But these are challenging times, and I just ask that whatever we do going forward to accommodate businesses, which is so important to all of us, but we do it safely. And if there's discussions back and forth on how to do certain things, um, 
it's it, and you feel maybe a little bit of a pushback from from just the fire department's perspective it really comes down to just safety we're here to help you uh in any way we can but what we do to modify our business practices we want to make sure that everyone including the employees are safe um I just have to give you. A, I, I, I'm gl glad Megan speaks every 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 time she can about masks and uh, distancing. And um, I'll, I'll give you two quick quick stories uh, of the mask issue. If you're out walking around and as Megan said, you have distancing, it's okay. Um, when you can get fresh air, that's a good thing. And I know my wife was had a little interaction with someone on the other side of the street. She likes to ride her bike. And she was kind of chastised by an individual because she didn't have her mask on. Well, she didn't need to have her mask on and I'm glad she didn't have her mask on. So let's all be polite to each other too. These are troubling times and tough for everybody. Um, and the other thing about masks, be very careful of, of driving, a lot, driving a lot in your vehicles with a mask on. I do know of an, uh, an incident this morning where someone was starting to feel lightheaded and they had to pull over it's because they had their mask on in their car. So let's let's be safe and let's uh, uh, let's use common sense, uh, follow the rules, and understand we're in this together. And as you hear many many times from our leaders, uh, we're going to get through this together. That's all I have. Thank you, Chief. As always, very well said, uh, and most especially the point about if you need emergency services, never hesitate to contact 911 because our police, fire, and EMS stand ready to respond. So thank you for all those reminders, Chief. Uh, my boss looks like he wants to speak. Larry, the, board, the floor is yours. Well, again, as I do every week, thank you all for attending. This is a, and for Joel and Megan for organizing this. It's a great way to uh, get input and uh, share information. Just want to comment that you know, as a board, we're working on the opening the beaches, uh, following Megan and Joe's guidance and the governors and doing it safely. It is interesting. My comment is that, uh, you know, the first priority is safety. Second priority in my mind is uh, probably a 1A is uh, how to get back and get some businesses going. I just uh, saw a report yesterday. I think Barnesville is at the top or near the top of unemployment. And that makes some sense because we don't have a lot of, um, or let me say it differently. We have a lot of people who don't work in offices, so they can't remove, they can't work remotely. And so they're without work. And the other thought I have is, and I certainly share the safety concerns of Norm and everyone and Megan's, but there's a, there's a risk if we go too quickly, there's also, and to open up, there's also a risk if we go too slowly. I don't know where that balance is, but we always have to have that. I think it's Norm and, and Megan and Joe discussed. We need an open discussion as how we move forward. And I appreciate you all joining this discussion so we can make that happen. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Larry. And, and that's, um, go ahead. Go ahead, Larry. Oh, I forgot to uh, mention the help that uh, Chief Gilman has given us too. We. Uh, uh, and our department has been fantastic. Uh, as usual, the town has been pulling it together to do a good job, and we don't thank them enough. Uh, I'm hoping they realize it without them saying anything. We will certainly pass it along, however. Uh, Elizabeth? Hi. Um, I just wanted to put something out there. My colleagues and I have been discussing ways of thinking outside the box. Um, and. One of the things that um, I'm very intrigued by, and the police chief and the fire department and, and Joe, you'd have to weigh in on this, is giving an open field like the, the high school stadium over like one night, it could be this local restaurant and one night it could be that local restaurant. And one day it could be this store so that people could shop outdoors with no fear um, and also maybe alternating church services on Sundays or something. So it's just something that we're investigating. I don't know if church violates separation of church and state or whatever, but just, you know, really we're encouraging everyone to think outside the box about how we could support businesses in a safe way. Um, there's all sorts of debate about what 
what's safe and what isn't. But one thing pretty much every scientist seems to agree on is that we're much safer if we're outside. So I just want to encourage everyone to think that way. Thank you. Th thank you. And I will pick up on that to say that uh, that was exactly the conversations that we had yesterday with the community development team and that I followed up with public safety uh, exactly that. Right now, there is nothing off the table. Uh, and that's why I mentioned with regard to restaurants, very encouraging to hear that the state agencies that probably would have restricted uh, things are partnering with restaurants. Uh, and I love your thinking as, as we get guidance from the governor on uh, congregating, perhaps we can offer open space for congregations. Uh, if you'll pardon the wordplay, but uh, I appreciate that mindset because uh, staff is working in that same same manner that uh, we're considering any and all options we can to be good partners, to restart the economy. And as Larry said, to, to impact on so many folks that are have already are already been significantly negatively impacted by job loss. So um, absolutely. And thank you for that. Those concepts. Appreciate it. Cindy, absolutely. Hopefully my phone doesn't give any feedback. I'm gonna move away um, from the laptop. Um, just so everyone knows, I have uh, physically moved back to my Harwich Court office and I am working on for us here at the visitor center um, to have once everything is clear, a takeout window. So we will not have anyone. And again, this is all predicated on Monday, of course, but hopefully we'll be able to have a takeout window where we can hand out welcome bags um, with information for all the businesses that are uh, members of the chamber. Megan, great points about the restaurants. I have actually also been fielding many, many calls, um, but have told everyone, everything's on pause, please hang tight. Um, to Chief Clark's point as well, um, been instructing everyone um, that we're waiting for Monday, the governor, and then Monday night for the selectmen's conversation and uh, with Joe and Megan's guidance. Um, so everyone is aware we're still in pause mode. Um, they're getting antsy as, they, as everyone, but um, they do know from here that it's safety first and that we will help everyone, business, organization, and uh, moving forward. So thank you all. And it's so great to hear from uh, Bob Sanborn and uh, Dr. Carpenter about the uh, positive things at both the tech and uh, the high school level. So thank you all for everything. Um, we're a great community and I hope everyone uh, still feels that when we hear how Monday and how we'll be moving forward opening. Thank you, Cindy, appreciate that. Uh, anyone else for information for the group? Hey Joe, Chief uh, Gilmet, please. Hey, I don't. I don't have too much for you today. Um, just to re re reiterate, Chief Clark's um, words that you know the police department is still fully staffed and operational. And if you need help, please do not hesitate to call nine one one because we are out there and that's our job. Um, and uh, I'm sure it will. Uh, you know, it would be almost welcome at this point for our patrols. <laughs> Uh, they are getting a little uh, tired of the of the day in and day out uh, uh, situation of what we're dealing with. And uh, for anybody that may have driven by the, the public safety complex today, you notice the flag was at half staff, and that's because today is National Peace Officers Memorial Day. So, um, you know, I guess it, it kind of just indicates that we're all in the same boat. This is a really big event. It's This is police week down in Washington, D.C. usually, but the whole thing has been canceled and gone virtual. Um, they usually add the names to the police memorial wall uh, this week and have candlelight vigils and a lot of different uh, events down there all week long, culminating with the Peace Officers Memorial Day. So um, we weren't able to attend. Uh, there's usually a big Kate contingent that goes down. There was a huge contingent last year because of uh, uh, Sean Gannon's uh, um, murder uh, the year before because his name went on the wall last year so that's just another uh you know another example of what we're all in as far as uh, the loss of of uh dealing with this and what we have to give up but other than that um 
I don't have anything unless there's any questions. Well, Chief, I'll start first just by saying thank you for that reminder. And I apologize. I had a conversation this morning with Deputy Chief Constantine, and I was going to lead with that and totally slipped my mind. So first, thank you for bringing that up and for reminding everybody. Um, we, um, we sometimes take for granted those who serve in public safety. So to take a moment today to, to recognize the, the flags that have staff um, and the sacrifices that have been made uh, is very timely. So thank you for that reminder. And my heart goes out to you and your colleagues because um, you know you and I know a, a, a retired chief that happens to live nearby that um, was very active in that stuff on his bicycle and uh, had been training for that uh, this year as well. So uh, thoughts go out to, to everyone in public safety, especially our peace officers on this day. So thank you very much, Chief, for that. Anybody else with information for the group? Well, before I say goodbye and conclude for the day, I just remind everybody the purpose of these calls is for you all to take the information that we've shared and redirect that to your constituencies, if you will, so that we continue to share messaging that we've uh, heard today. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend, a great week, and um, we will reconvene the Friday before Memorial Day weekend, even though it will not feel like it in any, any way, shape, or form. So thank you all very much. Stay well, stay safe, take care.